What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about Site Designer. So this is a really cool plugin for Revit, uh, it's one of the official Autodesk plugins and it allows you to make some really cool modifications to your site or to your topography and it, it can help you out a lot with creating some uh, really cool topo surfaces and basically the surroundings for your buildings in Revit. It makes working with topo surfaces really easy, although I have created some tutorials uh, uh, just on how to use, uh, how to create site plans, how to improve the topography, things like that. This tool re really takes it to another level. It's quite intuitive. It allows you to create some uh, a really cool, uh, really cool surroundings for your building and everything like that. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a little overview of this plugin. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like the plugin, uh, just tell me in the comment section below, and I can maybe do like a one-hour course on this plugin where I show you how to do like a complete uh, site project. But anyways, uh, one more thing before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe. I make tutorials like this each week. I make multiple tutorials plus I do one advanced Balkan Architect course. Uh, these courses are over one hour long and they are all available on my Patreon. First link in the description of this video. I've got over 40 hours of content there so if you're interested in something like that check it out. Okay without any further ado let's get into the tutorial. Here we are at the Manage Autodesk uh, website, so just Google Manage Autodesk. You go to All Products and Services and then you search for Revit and then you basically have to expand this little drop menu. And here uh, we have all of the versions of Revit, but here we have updates and add-ons. So if we just open that up, here we have all of the options that we have for uh, add-ons, but here let's just search for Site and hit enter and there we go we have the Revit site designer extension 2020 and you just go here to browser download and you basically click start the download and there we go and then you just open it up and install it on your computer so let's just wait for a second for it to download open that up and it's just going to start uh, uh, start installing it on your computer. So you just have to give it uh, a few moments. And there you go, it's done. Okay, now we're just going to go here to new and then I'm just going to be using the architectural template for uh, this one and then just click OK. And here we go. Now when we open up Revit, you're going to notice that here it says Site Designer. So we have all of the tools existing over here. Now before we can start playing around with all of these tools, first, well, we need a topo surface. And now to create a topo surface, I'm just going to go here to the Massing and Site tab. And here in the Project Browser, make sure to switch to the Site Plan. There we go. Okay, once in the site plan, I'm just going to go with topo surface, click there, and then we can split some points. And actually, before we place points, I'm just going to type in UN for project units dialog. And here I'm just going to change the units to uh, meters just because this is a topo surface project, so it makes sense to work in large units. Anyways, I'm just going to go with pick uh, with place a point and let's place just a couple of points here and make sure to create a large topo surface just because we're going to be creating some large elements so it makes sense to have room to work with those. Next, let's set the elevation to 4 meters, do a couple of points here, then to 8 meters and then perhaps do a couple of points here and then let's hit finish. Or maybe edit this, make it a bit larger. There we go, hit finish. Okay, so here we have our large uh, topo surface. Now I'm just going to navigate to 3D. This is what that looks like. And let's say we're happy with this and now we can start playing around with the site designer. Now, in order to start editing this topo surface with the site designer, you of course you have to head on to the site designer tab. And here we have the convert uh, panel and here we have a couple of options. Now I'm just going to show you the option for set base topo surface and then that's this topo surface over here. So you basically click here and then you get this little pop-up dialog. It says that is uh, set base topo surface. And basically here we have to go to pick and then we have to select the topo surface that we want to work with. And then basically nothing happens. Now this whole uh, site designer is uh, not that intuitive in my brief experience with working with it. it. It's a little weird. So you don't hit enter, you don't hit anything. You just go escape and then you click OK. 
and now you've basically created the topo surface. It's a bit weird, but that's how it works. Uh, now, uh, what the site designer is going to do is it's going to create a new topo surface over this one, and here you can name it. So let's say, uh, let's call this one first first topo surface. Now here you can set the phase. It's currently set to new construction. You can set it to existing uh, depending on the phasing you're working with. And then here we have the option to hide the original topo surface. Now as I said, it's going to duplicate your topo, topo surface. So you're going to basically have two topo surfaces. So if you don't want that, you can just check this. And when you hit apply, it's going to turn this into a new one. So as you can see here under name, it says first topo surface, but let's grab this and just move it out of the way a little bit. Now, if I go ahead here and check uh, reveal hidden elements, you're going to notice that here under this one, we already have the existing one. So the existing one doesn't have a name, but the new one has that first topo surface name. So that's just basically why we've tracked that uh, uh, to to hide the existing one. Anyways, we have this topo surface and now we can manipulate this uh, surface using our site designer tools. Now, the main tools are located here in these two uh, panels. We have the locate panel and then we have the modify panel. So basically it works like this. You use the locate panel tools to place certain elements uh, on the on the topo surface and then you go to modify to yeah you guessed it to modify them <laughs> okay so basically what I'm going to be doing now is just uh, showing you uh, a few tools that we have over here the first one is going to be the soft terrain tool it allows you to uh, manipulate terrain a bit more uh, organically than usual so for that I'm just going to switch here to site plan uh, just because it's a bit easier, especially when working with these tools. And then let's go with soft terrain. So you click and then you get this soft terrain dialog. Now you're going to notice as we uh, go along with this tutorial that most tools here uh, in this site designer look like this. So here you have the uh, soft terrain family. So you have the family that you're using for that particular tool. And then you have some settings on how that tool is going to be applied on your topo surface. So in this case, the subterrain tool uh, looks like this. So that's that's the only one. Then we have the uh, fa so that's the family. Now you can change that by going here and choosing a different family. Now I'm just going to leave it at at as as is for this one and then in a later tool I'm going to be showing you how to change this actual family. Now here we have the family type. So you have a few ways of uh, creating this soft terrain and we're going to be talking about that uh, later on as well. Next we have the uh, relative elevation from topo surface and con uh, constraint, uh, con uh, cons uh, constant elevation from uh, topo surface. What this basically means is with this tool we're going to be creating a sort of a ridge and we're going to be marking it out with a simple line. So this is asking us, do we want our ridge to have the top uh, at a consistent elevation or do we want to follow a, an offset elevation from our topo surface? So that means relative. Now, in order to explain this a little bit better here, I have a couple of sections. So relative means like this. So the modification is going to follow along with the angle of your topo surface and constant uh, means that it's basically going to have a constant offset from your ground level so it's going to be flat at the top like this so that's the only difference let's minimize this image and here i'm just going to go with the relative elevation and here for the elevation i'm just going to, just going to go with five meters uh, here we have the option, are we using uh, segments or chains? Uh, basically for lines, do you want the lines to be continuous or do you want it to be kind of one line, then you have to click again. Uh, let's go with chain just because it's easier. And then here we can either use existing host lines and we're going to be talking about that later or drawing host lines and that's what we're going to be doing now. And here also we have a radius. So basically when you have an angle, it can kind of fill it that angle. And it's uh, good to have a radius just because it makes things look a bit more organic. So if I just go insert, now you basically sketch that out. And now here I just pick first point, pick the second point, pick the third point. And here we have that radius that I was talking about. And here we have that line segment. So as you can see, it's just a simple chain. And now to finish this command, again, it's a bit weird, but you just hit escape. 
and then it says it's working and then if you go into 3d view this is what we have now to see this even better maybe go here to fine and here let's go to shaded and that's what this is so as you can see it's just a simple ridge on top that's what that looks like now you can modify this so let's go to modify and then play around with the families a little bit so let's modify it so the same tool the soft terrain here we have modify soft terrain so you just basically click there and now as you can see here we can see that line underneath that we've used to basically place this ridge or soft terrain so I can select that line and now we have some options to modify this and here for example we have the option to change type that's that family type that we've set up now if we open this up here we get something similar to that top portion of the uh, dialog and here we have the family and the type now if I change this to a 1 to or at uh, this uh, ratio so it's a, a, a bit of a different ratio so if I check that and click OK and click apply now it's going to change the ridge and it's just a little bit bigger so you get the point uh, let's go back perhaps we can go again to soft terrain select that same line change type perhaps uh, change it to six foot one to one and click OK apply so it makes it just a little bit wider but you get the point you can play around with that and maybe you can modify the families later on to make it make something different or something like that and that five meters that we've set up if I just go here to right elevation that's this over here so the distance from the bottom line to the top line is five meters that's the elevation now let's try placing a road so for a uh, road or a street as it's called here you again go to the same site plan then you go here to street and there we go we have that same dialogue just for this one we're going to be using as existing host lines so basically first we have to sketch out a line now you do that by going here to the architecture tab and then we have model lines and you basically do the same thing as we did later earlier on but let's go like that now you can see the lines so again I'm just going to set this to fine and here to wireframe just to see the line and then I'm going to go with uh, model lines and go with the fillet arc tool with the radius of 10 meters now for streets make sure to go with a higher radius just because they're a bit larger families so they do require a larger radius anyways we have this line in place let's go back to side designer move this off to the side a bit go to street there we go now here it's uh, currently set to sample street now if we open up this menu to load in different families if I scroll down here we have all the sample elements so here we have uh, sample street there we go but if I scroll a bit down we have regular streets so I'm just going to go with street metric and open that up now as you can see here we have more options we have one lane with curb and gutter uh, then we have two lanes no curb two lanes with curb and gutter two lanes without cur with curb only and then let's go with two lanes curb and gutter let's go all out now here again I'm going to go relative elevation to topo surface basically the road I, I want the road to follow the uh, elevation here just one quick tip that I found that works really good is make sure to have just a little bit of an elevation if, even if you want your road to be flat on the earth uh, if it's flat it's going to get a little bit buggy and weird and I'm going to be showing you that a bit later on um, but for now let's just leave a small elevation like this like one meter and then here again leave it at the chain and then here use existing line host line and then go to insert uh, okay so here uh, the family name that's the problem so let's call it uh, let's change it because it, it has to have a different name from the existing family so let's call it my street and then go to insert there we go and you just select one of these segments and then it goes through the progress and there we go we have our road so if I just close this off and go into 3d there we go so as you can see it has it has created the road and it's gonna lift it a little bit above the above the ground so that's really cool it really does a good job with all of these roads adapting them to your topo surface but you have to be careful just not to go too steep with your road because then it might mess things up now I'm just going to go back to site and then do a quick section kind of like that extend it completely and let's just open that up 
and let's go to fine add some shadow maybe go to graphic display options add some ambient shadows okay that did nothing but there we go as you can see here we have that road maybe go to realistic okay this looks horrific let's select this can I change the material yeah let's change this to grass and of course when I said grass I meant plant just because it's a nicer material there we go so as you can see the road looks really good it's adapting to the uh, to the topo surface perfectly in my opinion so uh, the roads are really useful I really like the way that these work uh, again as I said it's a little bit buggy but for the roads it works uh, amazing and then this is the ridge that we have created anyways uh, let's go back into the site plan and now for the final one I'm just going to do the sidewalk so the sidewalk again works pretty much the same way now if I set the elevation to zero and then go with the draw and then let's draw something like that hit escape let it do its thing there we go now if we go into 3d shaded so as you can see when you set it to zero it's going to look a bit weird so for example here we have some terrain entering our sidewalk so it looks really weird uh, here as well so uh, I, I just tend to keep it at a little offset and also uh, as you can see here from this gap over here a site designer isn't going to fix your mistakes when planning out your uh, your road so if your road goes to a big hill like this it's not going to work it's going to look really silly oh also one more thing here for example for something like this where you have kind of a road cutting through parts you can use walls so when you go here to site designer let's go back to site plan there we go so we can uh, okay uh, we can go here to retaining wall and then again you can set the elevation to I don't know two meters and uh, let's go to insert and then let's do a wall like this hit escape wait for a second and let's go into 3d there we go so we have this retaining wall over here that's gonna well it's it's retaining this here little hill so you can use that as well and you have that option and also you have uh, many many more tools here to to explore and play around with let's go here to realistic there we go I think this looks really cool so there you go that's how a site designer works those are some of the basic tools and functions of the uh, whole plugin I hope this was interesting and I hope I have uh, piqued your interest a little bit and then you can just explore this uh, further if that's something you're interested in and if you want me to create a complete one hour course let me know in the comment section below and then I can I can do that it, it, it is a fun tool Anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this tutorial. If you want to download this project file, uh, check out the first link in the description to my Patreon. There you can find all of my project files from Revit, as well as some advanced courses. I've got over 40 hours of content so far, and I'm putting out new tutorials, uh, new courses, new one-hour course each week. So if that's something you're interested in, check it out. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.